Here it is, the Team Associated RB10 two-wheel drive buggy. This car is based off the world championship winning Team Associated buggies, except it's ready to run. So is it a race car or a basher? The RB10 may look like a regular buggy on the surface, but something tells me that's just the beginning. So what can you do with the RB10? Let's find out. The RB10 is the newest ready-to-run car from Team Associated and it offers a fully ready-to-run off-road car with water-resistant brushless electronics capable of 3S LiPo use with DVC gyro stability and more. Now for anybody who's looking to start into RC racing, which can be a pretty daunting task, the readiness and the completeness of the RB10 make it a no-brainer. It's a really good platform to just start out with, and we're gonna hit the track later on with it. But I think the RB10 can do a whole lot more than just put down laps. Now, when you open up the box, you find the RB10 patiently waiting inside to be released. Rawr. What was that? The buggy is, of course, fully ready to go, being assembled with electronics and a painted body. Four AA batteries are required to power the included transmitter, and they're not included. A LiPo battery is also required, and it needs to have a T-style connector like this. For the beginners who probably don't already own their own RC batteries and a charger, then maybe the RB10 combo is the way to go, including this 2S LiPo battery and this LiPo Balance battery charger. So for the person just starting out, or if this vehicle is a gift for somebody, the combo is really the way to go. But it doesn't provide maximum power. And if you want that, you're gonna need a three cell LiPo battery. So what is the speed difference between a two cell and a three cell LiPo? Well, using our GPS speed meter and a fully charged 2S LiPo battery, we were able to achieve a top speed of 20 miles an hour. Next, we swapped the batteries and tried again, this time using a 3S LiPo battery. And after a few passes, we reached a top speed of 31 miles per hour. Now it should be noted that the gearing in the transmission of the RB10 is geared very conservatively, where there's a lot more lower end torque than there is high end RPMs. So you could get more speed out of this vehicle by just doing a gearing change. But you have to be careful not to overheat your electronics when doing this, especially on hot days. Now at the heart of the RB10 electronics is a brushless, sensorless system featuring the Reedy 3300 KV brushless motor, which is secured to an aluminum motor plate. Pinion gears are 48 pitch, and the system incorporates an adjustable slipper clutch. The ESC used is the Reedy SC600 BL brushless. It's 2S and 3S LiPo compatible with a T-style connector, and it's water resistant, so it's okay to get a little wet. For the servo, it's the Reedy 1523 MG Metal Gear Servo, and it's equipped with a servo saver horn to absorb any impact energy when you crash. The last piece of electronics is gonna be the transmitter system, which is a three-channel transmitter featuring a variety of common adjustments like steering and throttle trims. And then that's paired with a three-channel receiver featuring DVC, or dynamic vehicle control, which counter steers for you when the rear end gets loose. Now this receiver is not water resistant, so that's why it mounts inside this gasket sealed receiver box to keep it dry. Now one thing we noticed when doing those speed runs is that the stability gyro sensitivity seemed a little too high for our speed runs and occasionally produced the speed wobbles from our front tires where the gyro is in this never ending correction loop. Now this is actually pretty common with any gyro stabilization systems. That's why it's always recommended to dial it back for speed runs and it is adjustable on the RB10 on the receiver. You can dial it up or down in seven different steps or just turn it off completely. The DVC really does help though with dusty and loose conditions, especially with this two wheel drive vehicle. So we didn't turn it off completely, we just turned it down. Now for dirty and dusty conditions, this is the parking lot of our local RC track, the Silver Dollar RC Raceway. And the surface condition is pretty loose with big rocks everywhere. The ground clearance out of the RB10 is pretty minimal with its race inspired low center gravity chassis. But the RB10 still thrashes, flinging rocks and bouncing off of them. The knobby tires included with the RB10 feature a rubber compound suited for long lasting life, not high traction. So more suitable tires and a compound for the surface is a great upgrade. Whoa! 
Now here's the buggy driving in some taller dead grass. And as long as there's momentum, the buggy will carry on. But slow down too much and you're high sided and stuck. So this got me thinking, can we just put bigger tires on the RB10? Well, it turns out you can. These are 1.9 inch Hyrax rock crawler tires with a diameter of 4.75 inches and they dang old fit on the RB10 without any issues or rubbing. These taller tires provide not only more ground clearance, but the larger diameter over the stock tire acts like gearing up the transmission so the car is faster. Now the biggest challenge with using these tires was just keeping the car from flipping over because it really wanted to wheelie. Clearance over this rougher terrain though was definitely improved and the taller tires added a bit of stability in this really rough terrain for the RB10. Next, we headed over to our local park and bashed around in the grass, which was no problem with these taller tires. And again, the buggy just wanted to wheelie. This is also the time that we ran into our first issue when the buggy lost all forward drive. My first thought was we stripped a gear or that the slipper clutch came loose, but neither happened. Instead, it was user error, my fault. Now, when I looked at the buggy, it appears that I just didn't tighten the wheel nut down all the way when I changed the tires because the tire had pulled back a little bit away from the axle and away from that pin. And so did the hex. The hex was not even locked on, and so we lost all drive. After that, we made our first upgrade, which was these seven millimeter aluminum wheel hexes that clamp onto the axle and the pin and they're the same width as the stock hexes. Being that these are aluminum material, they're gonna be a lot more durable and robust over the stock plastic hexes too, which is especially important when laying down big power. Now the bummer about all this is that after we changed those hexes, we went to reinstall these tires and realized that the rubber had actually ripped right behind the ring here. These are beadlock wheels. Now, I don't know why, there's some really high powered crawlers out there, so a 3S brushless system shouldn't tear them, but to be fair, maybe there was a tear on the rubber here to begin with that, you know, led to them ripping. In any case, this was the only tire that ripped. If you're familiar with the team associated SR10 dirt oval car and the DR10 drag car, then you probably know all these platforms are pretty similar to each other and somewhat module, where you can take things from one car and add it to the other. So with that, I bring to you the RB10 drag buggy. So all we did here was add our DR10 drag car tires and wheels and they fit right on with no issues. And then we took off the DR10 wheelie bar and it bolted right up onto the RB10. As a drag car with some big old meat tires, the RB10 feels just like the DR10, except with a little shorter chassis. Now, would you want to legitimately go and compete against proper drag cars like this? Heck no. But would you want to go race your buddies in the Walmart parking lot or bash around the neighborhood? You darn right. If you really wanted to be a competitive drag racer with the RB10, you could swap some parts like adding the longer DR10 drag car chassis and a drag car specific body, tires, wheels, and wheelie bar or just make it easier on yourself and maybe just buy the DR10. Now at some point in all this thrashing and bashing, we noticed the rear left outer hinge pin working its way out, even though it's kind of captured behind the head of this screw. But if you noticed how the proper race buggies capture this pin, they actually use a long screw that goes all the way through secured by a lock nut on the end. And I think we should add that here. So it's upgrade time. And this is one of the best mods you can do for durability. Now, all we need to do for this is pick up these two hinge pin screws from Team Associated, and then you'll need two M3 nylock nuts. Then with a three millimeter drill bit, you have to drill out the backside of the suspension arm hole because it's been closed off to accommodate the other hinge pin style. So just pop the hole only in the arm, slide the hinge pin screw through with the hub in there, Add a nut on the end and voila. Now there's only one thing left to talk about and that's driving the RB10 on the track, which surprise, surprise performs great. Now a couple of notes here. This is a new indoor carpet track that A-Main is putting together and there's no jumps on it yet. For traction, we changed the RB10 tires to Schumacher carpet tires, front and rear, and they hook up great. Now the RB10 diff fluid feels about 10 or 15,000 weight 
and it feels great. There's a lot of body roll out of the RB10, so maybe a couple of sway bars would serve us really well on this carpet specific surface. Now the rear motor layout on the RB10 is best for looser surfaces like a dirt track, but it still kicks butt on this carpet and occasionally pulls a wheelie. We didn't change anything other than the tires though, and performance is a lot better than expected. The only issue exposed by this high traction carpet is the softness of the steering and the servo saver, which you'd want to tighten up for racing or just leave it the way it is if you only plan on bashing. Guys, thanks for watching this video and check out the RB10 down below by following our links. And for more RC, check out these videos.